welcome everyone. Our guest today is Jijo Sebastian. Jijo is a mechanical engineer by education and works as a guidance and control system engineer in a large engineering firm in Melbourne. He's a graduate from IIT Madras and also holds a PhD in mechanical engineering. Jijo has kindly agreed to be our guest today and is showing some love to the community by sharing his career journey. If you have any questions you want to ask Jijo, feel free to drop them in the chat below this video. I will now hand it over to Jijo to introduce himself. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for the warm introduction. Honored to be here as a member for this discussion about my career path and career opportunities in the way that I see in Australia. I have a background in the robotics and control system engineering, apart from mechanical engineer background. So I have completed my PhD focusing on robotic and control systems from the University of Melbourne. Even before starting my PhD here in Australia, I worked in aerospace and semiconductor industries as a mechanical engineer. So as you said, I'm currently working as a guidance navigation and control engineer in Australia, where I apply my experience and expertise in robotics and control systems. Sure. Thanks, Jijo. Uh, your education and experience is incredible. For our listeners, there will be many students looking at this video. A student might not understand what guidance and control system engineer exactly is. Do you have a very simple example from our day-to-day -day life that they can relate with? Yes. Control system engineering, usually it sits within the domain of electrical engineering or mechatronics engineering in, in a university setting. To give an example of what is a control system, control system is everywhere in an engineered system, I would say. Like none of the engineered system is an engineered system without a control system. For instance, you might be using a room heater as an inbuilt temperature control system. What it does is it measures a temperature of a room and it sets the desired temperature of what you need. A little more complex system like a cruise control in a car that you drive where you want to maintain a desired speed across a hill or a road without you setting a speed and the system takes over and automatically achieves that. And control system is the one that helps the fly fly. So all those automatic motion and thing is what I can do. That is yeah. great. So, so many exams. Thank you for that. Yeah. What skills or qualities are important? for success in this field. The reason why I like the control system is it's mostly mathematics. Like one, someone with a mathematical background can take up that field. Common um, skills to be successful. Yeah. Uh, I would say communication skill is one of the most important thing that you want to be successful in any career and sure. the same applies to mm -hmm. here, here. The way that I mean is, is not just written communication, the way that you present an idea or work, your work to someone. Other skills, the mm -hmm. one that probably helps you is how you implement that skills in a practical setting, um, mm -hmm. which requires skills like coding skills. Nobody will tell you how you can solve that problem. So mm -hmm. you need some sort of problem solving skills and coding skills to be a successful in a career like this. Thanks, Jijo. Did you have to do any additional short courses for coding or to learn soft skills, problem solving skills? Yes. So when I made a career switch to industry in Australia, that is one of the challenging part I have. Like I had a good technical background, okay. but I didn't have those skills to demonstrate that I have this extensive coding experience. I took up some courses, very basic coding skill in C, C++. So now yeah. I will be touching more on your experience in Australia. Uh, how was the job market in Australia for mechanical engineers? So my background as a mechanical engineer to land on a job in Australia. That was a difficult path, I would say. Okay. The reason being when I started looking for a professional career in Australia, none of my previous experiences outside Australia, like in India was, was not counted. I was getting rejected, I would say, in the initial time when I applied for jobs. So one thing helped me is the way that I, I look for jobs specific to my expertise area. So I was aware for this area, there are not many jobs available and there are not many people available as well. Anything that comes under that domain and sign up for the first one. Okay. So, which is what I did. I would say, keep it open. Starting job might be harder, but after that, you will learn what are the opportunities in Australia. And there are many opportunities. It might not be visible for a newcomer in the first go, but when you land on something and when you look around, you will see more opportunities. So I'm going to ask you one question, which I usually get yeah. through my channel. Yeah. Someone who is very well qualified, has good experience from India, and they come here and expect that, you know, they will find a job 
uh, equivalent to the experience that they have in India. If they are not able to be at the same position as they were back in India, it can make them feel low. What would you say to those? For new people, I would say that would be harder because you have to come down on a career problem. My opinion would be the expectations from an employer's perspective is different here compared to India. You need to understand what people want when you apply for a job and things like people want someone who is fit to the team, someone who is trustable. Those skills are not very reflective in your resume. You being a team lead in a company somewhere outside Australia doesn't show that you are a trustable and a fit for a team. Keep your expectations low because you have come to a new country. You have a cultural difference between what you were before and here and try to reach out, make more network. Sooner or later, you will find a career path. In the first instance, you may not be getting the same position here, but get something that you think you can grow in your career rather than taking an entirely different career, sooner or later you will reach where you want to reach. Oh, that's a beautiful answer. So when yeah. I search for what are the options for the students who are from the non-medical background, and there are so many engineering options that come up, like automotive mm -hmm. engineering, electrical, mechanical, civil. Out of all of these, which do you think is the one that has the most uh, job opportunities? It's a hard question. I, I would say civil engineering has prospects yeah. in Australia, mm -hmm. mostly, be mostly because there are many civil structures and stuff sure. that are getting built and they need geo related, like civil related stuff are getting placed more easily compared to a mechanical mm -hmm. engineering. In my view, look for where industry is going. Defense industry and aerospace industry is getting more attraction which means people are ready to fund in that industry. People are ready to innovate, which means new jobs will come. Defense needs mechanical engineers, defense needs electrical engineers. They need mechatronics. They need every other people. When, when a student comes in, they only look for, okay, I want to get an admission somewhere. 95% of the people don't look into what they want to do next after that one. So I think it would be better and more beneficial for students on how some sort of idea where they want to go after that and try to tailor their skill at least to get close to there. So sure. look for industries to, to be the answer. It's a great answer, Jijo. And from that answer, what I'm hearing is fields are not rigid. If you are electrical yeah. engineer or mechanical engineer, it's more about what skills that you want to acquire. So <laughs> what is the single piece of advice you want to give to students who want to come to Australia? Come with a plan, basically. Like don't just come for any degree and finish a courses and I will go with the flow. And if you come with that mentality, what would actually happen is you will go with the flow and and we may not reach where you want to reach. I would say thank you so much. And hopefully our viewers will also appreciate the time that you have taken out. Yeah, thank you for being part of the channel. No and it means a lot to us uh, and our community. Thank you, thank you yeah. so much, Jijo.